Hate it. How's everybody doing? Hey guys. Uh, it's Jay Kelly and Courtney Brophy here with you on your Monday afternoon. Hope everybody's weekend was good. Getting ready for the Thanksgiving week. So, Courtney, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. It's been kind of a crazy Monday, but it's a short week, so I will not complain. Yeah, very short. I don't know about you, but I actually have to take Wednesday off too. My uh, my kids are home from school that day, and it basically becomes a day off from work. Uh, so I have a very very short week. So a lot of work to do in forty eight hours. Rise to the yeah, chat. I'm with you. I'm like, what do I have to get done that I can like calmly just be off for a couple of days? <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, uh, so we're getting ready for a short week. We, uh, we decided because it's a short week and nobody's working that hard. Yeah. Right. Uh, we would keep it light. We, we do the only surface, uh, light reading and light discussion today. We're not going to, Oh wait, no, we're going to go with like the hardest, heaviest topic we could think of and, uh, tell you that you're about to get fined for thousands of dollars or arrested or something. So <laughs> yay, keep it light. Only thing I got to do is I got to plug my diet Coke. This is for Rory. Rory. I got my, uh, I got oh. my Monday afternoon. <laughs> you don't like do you, Diet Coke? Oh, how do you drink that stuff? It's like the most vanilla of drinks. How do you not like Diet Coke? It's If I'm going to drink brown water, I'll just drink brown water. So you don't like any soda then? Unless it's got rum in it. No. <laughs> All right. Fair. Fair. <laughs> I'll save my calories right. for more exciting things than Diet Coke. I'll just leave it at that. Zero calories. Huh? <laughs> Uh-huh. Then why drink it if you're not going to get the sugar? I'm not drinking it. I don't want the calories. I want the flavor, son. Come on. What are you, new? Flavor. Because that's, anyway. All right. We can talk for an hour. <laughs> All so, right. So here's here's the segue, and here's where this conversation that we're having today came from. So the universe runs in funny cycles, and several times over the last few weeks, I've seen in various Facebook groups comments about when a real estate agent tries to post an ad in Facebook and they get a little certified compliance button. And without fail, when it comes up, the community responds with, just click it, it'll go away. And this you mean, is- You mean just click it and don't read it, is what you're saying? Yeah, right? just click certify compliance and it'll go away and you can move on with your day. Yeah. So the problem with that is that what that button actually is, is certifying compliance with federal fair housing laws and Facebook making sure that you're being thoughtful in your advertising and partially covering their own butt. But nonetheless, it's actually there to protect you and make sure you take a second thought. Okay. So that's where this came from. I feel like this fair housing topic does not get discussed in the marketing and advertising circles. So we're going to discuss it here. And I will preface this entire conversation with TJ and I are not attorneys and we are not real estate brokers. I was a licensed agent for many, many, many years. I, in the last 12 months, sat through a half day training at the realtor board about fair housing. So I know as much as any licensed real estate agent. However, I am not your broker and I am not your attorney. Everything we say should be interpreted through those parties. Um, This is more just to give you food for thought and to hopefully help you be more thoughtful in your practices, both as an advertising marketing and then a little bit into your sales as well. Okay. So... TJ, I'm going to kick this off here. This here is the actual thing that you are agreeing to when you click certify compliance, okay? Your certification. It is a violation of Facebook's advertising policies to discriminate based on personal characteristics such as race, ethnicity, color, national origin, religion, age, sex, sexual orientation, gender identity, family status, disability, medical, or genetic condition. It may also better violate federal, state, provincial, local, or other applicable laws in your area or the area in which the ads will be shown. Such laws may prohibit discrimination when running ads related to categories such as housing, employment, or credit opportunities. For example, when running an ad for an apartment for rent, it may be illegal to exclude people who have children from that opportunity. You agree that you have reviewed Facebook's policy prohibiting discrimination and will abide by those policies. You certify that you will not use Facebook advertising to improperly discriminate and will comply with all applicable laws. Okay. So every time you have clicked certify, you are stating, I understand fair housing laws and I will not violate them using Facebook's system. (laughs) So is this something that you have come across with agents, TJ? Or is this, am I just kind of bringing this up out of nowhere for you? Not really. really. No, no. Uh, Heard it, heard it, heard it, saw, you know, the same discussion forums and, and kind of threads that you're talking about, but uh, not being the Facebook advertiser of our duo, no, this is not something that generally comes across. Uh, it made news uh, a couple of months ago 
somebody did a big expose on how, you know, your local real estate agent is probably breaking the law with, you know, on purpose or not, they're still just in, in non-compliance. I forget where I read that and, and when exactly it happened, maybe this past summer. Um, but that was it. So this is not my first time hearing about it, but it is definitely my first time discussing it and my first time hearing about it in detail. Um, so I wanted to, to kind of only say that, you know, for those of us who aren't real estate agents or aren't experts in this or don't have an MBA, haven't, you know, reviewed that that topic that you just read, the, the disclaimer a million times, uh, mm -hmm. Number one, it's not necessarily just safe to hit click and move on, like you said, right? But number two, like there are, you know, there's legal and ethical implications here that we absolutely need to be aware of. And that's what we're talking about today. But there's also like a practical everyday uh, way in which this could impact your, your life and your job as a real estate agent. And I think where those two overlap is where the most value, like where you and I are going to be most helpful to people of like, yeah, you know, because every, every realtor, like you just said, sits through this in, in getting a license and in yearly training and whatever, everybody hears, hears about it and talks the talk as it were. But in terms of every day walking the walk and clicking the button and targeting and marketing your material to the right people, there's there's a real danger there that you're in violation, maybe without even knowing it. So I'm most interested in the practical, you know, don't click this button, click that one or whatever the case may be. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. And I think, you know, in my kind of reading up so I could speak most in, as intelligently as I could on this subject, being not an attorney or a real estate broker. Um, the, the big theme that I kept seeing is your intent means absolutely nothing. What matters is its appearance and the potential effect. Okay. Okay. So if you're an agent and you just are intentionally not trying to sell houses to black people in a particular neighborhood and it's really blatant, that's your intent. You're doing it on purpose, right? I would say 99% of our industry, because most of us live by the Realtor Code of Ethics, if beyond the federal law, we're a part of the National Association of Realtors and we have a code of ethics that we live by, right? We're managed by that at our brokerage level. So you want to think 99% of our industry is not doing it that blatantly. However, what you're doing may have the appearance or the effect of a discriminatory practice, okay? So where's the fine line there? That's the tricky part, okay? So we're just going to use an example here, TJ, because I came across it in my reading. So I think it's a good example. So let's say that you have a listing down the street from the Jewish Community Center. That's a protected class, right? The Jewish community. It's a protected class. So you as a marketer, because you can't help it, the second you come across that listing, you in your mind have already written the profile of who's going to buy that house. You can't help it. You're, you're not being racist. <laughs> it's just your brain's going to go, oh, well, it's not, that would be a great place for somebody that wanted to be at the community center all the time, right? Um, and especially if you've been in this industry a really long time, those profiles get to be easier and easier to write in your mind. Um, walking distance to the elementary school, families with young kids, right? Um, near the big gym, people that like to work, you, you know, it just is, it's part of the industry. You can't help it, right? So if you take that listing and you say, this is an awesome opportunity for a Jewish family to live near the community center. First of all, that's a conscious thought that you had and one you need to be aware of. And second of all, is it against the law to advertise that listing in the Jewish Community Center newsletter? No. Per my interpretation, as long as you are also marketing it other places, that's not wrong. And if you are only marketing that listing to the Jewish Community Center, then that is wrong. But if you're also giving them other listings, then it's okay. Okay. <laughs> because so, what you can't do is give the appearance or the effect that you only want Jewish people living in that neighborhood. All right. That's so can I let me stop you there? So so you said the word only. So we're it's exclusivity that mm -hmm. or the appearance thereof that mm -hmm. would be the problem here, right? Mm -hmm. If if I'm marketing this house to only to one group of people because I think it's gonna appeal to them best or that's who I want to live in, for whatever reason, uh if I'm only directing this listing at one group of people, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. And as a step beyond that, if uh, if the only the only listing I ever show to a particular group of people yeah. is this one or ones that are nearby or something, that's also a problem, right? Mm -hmm. So it's true on both the the listing level and the group of people level. Both things need to be not exclusive. Both things need to be diversified in in the material that you're showing off and, and talking yeah. about. Do I have yeah. that right? 
Yeah. And I mean, again, I'm not an attorney, but that's the general training that I've always received. If you think of and this is more to give you thinking through it. Right. Uh, if you have questions, talk to your broker uh, and see what their their take on it is. No. Um, things like this is a big one I see violated just about every day. The schools. You are not an education evaluator by profession. You are a real estate sale facilitator. Simple statements like, oh, the schools are great here is a discriminatory practice. I can't, I can't are, compliment the school. You are not allowed to make qualitative statements about the schools. Can you say they're a state championship football team? That's an even gray area because maybe it's not a football family or it is a football family. So you're making a decision on who they are. Now, if wait, you say award winning. Hang on, hang on. I, now, I, you know, I, I'm not. It's that complicated. But. State championship football team, that's a fact. That happened. If that's you say it to everybody, it's not discriminatory. If you uh, only say it to the family that has the 15-year-old hunky boy. Okay. Another, you know, so with schools, I see it all the time. This is one of the most blatant ones. And people in my district, my area here, do it all the daggone time. There are, how do I say this without, I'm not licensed anymore, so I can say whatever the heck I want. <laughs> there are, there are clear lines between the school districts in our area. Significant property value changes. We've got some of the top 10 in the state kind of school districts, and then we have some of the bottom 10 within like a 25 mile radius. They're very clear lines. And I consistently see in the good school districts, this great home and an award winning blah, blah, blah school district. In the less desirable school district, they will include students, uh, families in this neighborhood love to send their kids to the charter schools. Not commenting on the public schools. Mm -hmm. So you're giving the reader an impression that there's a problem with the schools. Mm -hmm. You're intentionally steering their kids out of those public schools. Yeah. And when you're commenting on the good school district, you're, you know what I mean? Like it's, you're intentionally steering families into that school place because the schools are good. Like it yeah. seems like the most innocuous thing, especially when you live there. Like I'm a resident here, right? I know. But your opinion of a good school may be different. Right. Maybe All right. So a science program, maybe they want a theater program. Maybe they want an arts program. Maybe they want AP classes. Your opinion, maybe they think a racially diverse school is the greatest thing ever. Yeah. So then you know I mean? let, so that's, me, that's one of the most obvious ones I see all the time. So let me Constantly. bring it back to the, to the tangible. Then if oh, I'm yeah. setting up my ads on Facebook and, and we've got two examples to cover here now, there's the Jewish community center down the street and there's the divided lines between school districts. Um, if I, uh, in example number one, the Jewish community center down the street, um, we've already talked about how I need to market more than just one listing to, to the people who go to that community center or whatever the case may be. And I need to market that, that listing to other groups besides just the folks that go to that Jewish community center. So when I open up my ads manager on Facebook, uh, I, I might be tempted to draw a geographic circle around the Jewish community center, or I might be tempted to like, you know, to profile of the audience based on like people who like that page or something to that effect. Are you basically saying just don't do that? Just ignore the 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 signals that Facebook offers you to connect. A lot of a lot of that kind of stuff, Facebook's going to reject you anyway. Really? Okay. Yeah. So it, it's really okay. like, for example, I have a client that uh, is a mortgage person. He's a active duty military and specializes in VA loans. That was what he came to me to market was I want to help veterans get they get into these loans because they don't know about them and I want to do that service. Okay. And I was writing what I thought to be the most innocuous, helpful, genuine, sincere, because that's the person that he is. I'm writing the copy for those ads. And it got rejected over and over and over and over and over that they would not run the ad because I was calling them out for being military and that that was discriminating again. Like, and I'm like, but no, it's a product for military people. How can that be discriminatory? Facebook's being even stricter than I am. Uh -huh. Because okay. they don't want you using their platform too. So some of those kind of choices, if it if that if your ad keeps getting rejected, you're probably doing something along those lines. Um, if you can't figure out why, put it to a Facebook group, and they will probably be like, "Yeah, you're clearly saying all of that good stuff." Um, okay. So here's here's another little share with the share with the class here. Okay. Oh, you brought you brought but, notes. You got like textbooks and stuff. I did. I, I, this stuff interests me. I think so in a former life, I might this have been in a class with. This is all I have today. So lists of words or phrases to avoid. This is from the federal fair housing 
Act. All right. So, so this is not Facebook. This is the law. This is the law. See, there's the little paragraph number. Law. Originally passed in 1968, updated in 1988, but we're talking federal law here, not Facebook's mm -hmm. policies. All right. So there's a list of it's words. Been the law for 50 years, you guys. Now it's been right, adapted every... over the years, but all right, almost 50 years. Okay. It is unlawful to use the following words or phrases in housing advertisements unless used in a clearly non-discriminatory context, such as white cabinets or French doors. I think that's right. Wait, uh, <laughs> wait. The word, the list you're about to read, it is illegal to say the word. To use the following words or phrases in housing advertisements. Got it. Okay. The list is neither intended nor reasonably able to be all inclusive. It is also unlawful to use words or phrases not appearing on the list, but which are used in a context which may be reasonably interpreted as indicating an unlawful discriminatory intent. Okay. I'm not going to read the whole list. Pretty much any race or religion you could think of is on this list. <laughs> so I'm not going to read the whole thing. But here's some ones that I think will shock you are on this list. Adult, with the exception of, the, it clarifies here, like housing for older persons. There's a part of the act that specifies like a 55 plus community. But just saying adult people, you're discriminating against people with children, right? Uh, blind, child or children, um, couple, disability of literally any kind, deaf, dis handicapped, whatever. Empty nester, handicapped, ideal for dot, dot, dot. How many of you guys have written that into your ads or your property descriptions? Uh, mentally handicapped, ill or retarded. Newlyweds, perfect for dot, dot, dot. How many of you have written that into your property descriptions? Perfect for the young family wanting to be near the schools. According to this, it's against the law. Uh, prefer retired persons or retirees. Suitable for dot, dot, dot. Same, same line of conversation, right? Young or youthful. Okay. Here's the big ones that stand out there. Empty nesters, young, newlyweds, and then those dot, dot, dots. Ideal for, suitable for, perfect for against federal law you guys wow all right we're all doing it don't get me wrong i'm not trying to call anybody out or be like you're going to jail because you're yeah. getting away with it well so that's the thing is like what what is going to happen you know like i i, I asked you all this off offline but like is there is there safety in numbers here the fact that everyone is doing this and it seems to have become the norm especially things like you know like you said empty nesters or ideal for uh is that what, is that is it is it at all you know lessened or made slightly safer by the fact that there's other people doing this and it just kind of is the norm now or what? I'm not an attorney and I'm not gonna I don't have okay. an opinion or a thought on that. My okay. as real estate agents, you are licensed by a governing body. You have response. TJ and I as marketers aren't governed by anybody. <laughs> We do whatever the heck we want with our business. You <laughs> as real estate agents do not have that privilege. You are governed by the, you know, by the laws of the land. And when the laws of the land say something, are you really going to risk your livelihood to, to live in that gray area? It's up to you. I can't advise you one way or the other, but I encourage you to be thoughtful about it. And I encourage you when you think you might be in a gray area to talk to your broker about it. And most of you guys, especially in the larger brokerages, have access to legal counsel. Um, I know in Pennsylvania, the Pennsylvania Association of Realtors, we have a legal hotline we can call about anything. I do it all the time on behalf of my clients um, because I don't want to get them in a gray area. Um, think about it when you're writing your blog content. Are you all, now we use niches, right? We coach people to use a niche. So if you're only providing content and listings to seniors, are you being discriminatory because you're not also providing good content to families and Catholics and the gays? And you know what I mean? Like, wow. if you're niching, are you performing discriminatory activity? Hmm. It might be. That's something to talk to your broker about, which always sounds like a cop out because we don't have the answer, but not your broker. I don't, I'm not responsible for you legally. So <laughs> food for thought. Yeah. Food for thought. Have you ever, when you're writing stuff, 
the, bringing up the topic of niche, DJ, hearing, having heard everything we talked about today. Does that scare you a little bit? Yeah, absolutely it does. Uh, a, my, my gears are turning now on how to how to avoid jail time, you know, for my clients and stuff. Uh, so again, not a lawyer, not a broker or even realtor. Uh, so I'll, you know, take that with a grain of salt, right? Don't take my advice as, as gospel or even as like viable, uh, but in strict marketing terms, uh, I would say, all right, then, then have more than one niche. Right. Okay, sure. I, I can still niche down to a grain of sand if I want, as long as I'm hitting every grain of sand, I think, right? If I understand correctly. Uh, and, and I'm going to operate under that assumption. So given that, you know, you could even have different, you know, you could have different websites if you wanted to that can still give the, the flavor, the marketing flavor of appealing to a certain group of people. So long as you're avoiding forbidden words and phrases, uh, as long as you're not exclusively using that website to market your listings. I mean, IDX is IDX. It's going out to all your websites anyway. So there's something to be said for that. But in blog content, like you're addressing, Courtney, like maybe you need to have a category for, you know, the 55 plus crowd. You need to have a category for the younger folks. You know, I, I don't know. I, I would need to sit down with a lawyer and, and a realtor too, to, or a, a broker to really go over the, the, the details of that because it's it's one that I have never dealt with. You know, I'm, I'm not, not an agent, so I don't know. Well, and you got to think about, again, appearance and effect, right? So yep. you just said maybe separate websites. I would say put them all on one website because if somebody just came across one. True. True. You know, a lot of them are specialists. Like there's a, there's a uh, designation that's a senior real estate specialist. Okay, that doesn't make you discriminatory. It makes you have a specialty. That's not wrong. Right. But, you know, you have to handle that delicately so that you aren't being construed as only as pushing all the seniors into one part of town. Now, if it's a 55 plus community, that's a different subject, right? Um, I know that, just, for example, I'm, I, I'll draw. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Well, I was going to draw a parallel to um, uh, the, the financial industry in. Uh, oh, look out. Um, and in like I've worked with a number of banks, for example. Uh, on their marketing and financial planners and advisors and stuff. And they're heavily regulated. And in a lot of cases, they're like, no, I, it's not even worth it having a website because the, the loopholes or the, uh, the hoops I'd have to jump through are too, but, but in some case, I mean, every bank is going to have a website that you just have to, right? So they have, uh, legal requirements about, they need to have photos on their website that represent you know, a certain number of classes of people and they need to have like an equal distribution of those photos on the website. Um, so I wonder then if there's any, I mean, there's a legal precedent for that. I don't know how much, uh, you know, that makes its way into real estate, but I could see how somebody could make an argument that if you're going to be, you know, putting up photos of a community, you know, just downtown shopping areas or something, you need to make sure that you don't have all white people or only women or only, you know, elderly folks with gray hair in your photos. You got to have more than just that one class of people. So again, yep. not an agent, not a realtor, not a lawyer, not a broker, but I wonder, you know, it makes me think. Yeah, I, I came across the same thing. It absolutely, that's one of the things that they're actually, incur so if you're an agent who writes a ton of blogs and uses images on all of these blogs, are you only putting white families? <laughs> In your blogs, do you ever have a gay family? Do you ever have a black family? And um, like, you may be doing it totally consciously, especially because we are all unintentionally attracted to our own demographic, right? So there's an it was maybe and completely innocent to you, but if you scroll through your website, is there anything but white families or black families or whatever it may be? Um, you may not be doing it intentionally, but if you have nothing but white people on your website and I'm an Asian American and I don't see any Asian Americans on your website, am I going to be discouraged from working with you because of that? Yeah. Yeah. So outside of the legality here, obviously that that's a huge issue, but you know, the reason the laws exist is you know, decades of, of disenfranchisement of particular classes of people and trying to correct that to some degree and prevent it from ever happening again. So right. get down to the root of the issue here and it's, it's inclusiveness, right? It's, it's opening up the, your opportunities and your services and your availability to everybody. To anybody that wants to work with you, we'll work with you. No problem. Uh, so if you put on, you know, you're big onto mindsets, Courtney, if you make that your mindset, Make your frame of reference is I work with anybody, anytime, uh, come on in, the door's open, making sure that your, your, the words you write and the pictures you show reflect that. And then the places you go out and, and make inroads and contact with, uh, reflect that. Yep. Well, and, and you know, the whole point, like you said, the whole point of the fair housing law is that as Americans, we have the right to live wherever the hell we want, as long as we can afford to live there. 
It is not our job as a real estate professional to say, oh, you've got kids, you want to live over here. Oh, you don't have kids, you want to live over here or whatever the subject is. Um, I think the kids versus no kids is one that comes up pretty often. Uh, like, it, you know, and it's stuff like you may not even think think about this, CJ. This is, again, an example. I liked this research in case you can't tell. <laughs> um, the example that I came across. So you're sitting in an open house. This is not a marketing function, but it is a sales function. You're sitting in an open house in a neighborhood that you know doesn't have a ton of children in it. You just know because you sold a bunch of houses there. You know. And a family walks in the uh, into the open house with three kids under five. Whether you are conscious of it or not, your brain said they're not going to like living here and the residents aren't going to like having them here. But I, you may not even make it a conscious thought, but part of you says this isn't the right neighborhood for them. That is not your job. If they like the house and they can write the check, they get to live wherever the heck they want, assuming there aren't bylaws in the community, right? Um, and vice versa. If it's a neighborhood with a ton of kids and it's like an older couple, you'd be like, why would you want to live here? Like you may not do it out loud, yeah. but are you, are you speaking to those people the same way about the house? Are you talking about the school district to everybody that walks, like whatever comment you're making about the school district? Are you making it to everybody? Are you talking about the playground to everybody? Are you talking, you know, cause it's part of the value of the property, whether they're going to utilize it or not. You don't know. Maybe they've got grandkids mm -hmm. that are around a lot. You don't know. Uh, another example, if you're, if it's a house that you're showing to two different families, one's got a guy in a wheelchair, the other one doesn't. When you're showing it to the guy with the wheelchair, you're talking about all the handicapped accessible features. When you're talking to the family that doesn't have somebody, you're not talking about those things. You're presenting the property differently based on the demographic of that family. And what you may not know is that that second family has an elderly grandpa grandparent that's around a lot that maybe they need that. You're selling the house differently based on who they are. All right. So again, well, let's go back to, to tangible, you know, actionable things. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm the agent hosting that open house and I, you know, I have cognitive biases the way everybody does. I, I do my best to counteract that and, and be, you know, treat everybody equitably and all that. Uh, how do I, what, what action plan can I set up for myself? Do I have a checklist of categories of topics to discuss? So schools, playgrounds, uh, you know, handicapped sexual features and I don't know, whatever else there, there might be like restaurants, you know, bars and nightclubs within, you know, walking distance, whatever. Uh, I, I hold up a checklist and say, here's some stuff for me to talk about. You pick. Is that, is that, well, I think the, the best training I ever got on it was from agents who are, 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 how do I say this? Who can guide the conversation to open ended questions from the person. Okay. If they ask you, are there playgrounds nearby? If they ask you questions that will guide that conversation, um, but at the same time, you don't want to pry and be like, do your kids play sports? Like that's, see, the really, really excellent agents that I've seen train on this, they, they guide the conversation that they're only asking the questions that are answered. Mm -hmm. That's the safest way, is to not volunteer information you think they want to know. Yeah. I mean, three bedroom, three bath, finished basement, but uh, stuff about the house. But the community itself, try not to make assumptions um, and, and answer the questions as they're asked. Yeah. Okay. That's, the, that's the best cover your own butt that I've seen out there, which but is only. You are, you are talking sales now. You're talking open house face to face. Mm -hmm. If I need to get people in the door to that open house, mm -hmm. we all know that, you know, three bedroom, two bath finished basement isn't enough in marketing. We've got to go beyond that. And now we're crossing into volunteering. You can't say everything. You can't list every detail. Nobody's got the time for that. So how do you pick and choose which material to highlight? And that, here we are again, right? Ask your broker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, right. for me, I tend to find, now this is just Facebook ads. You want to talk about actionable items here. If you... You want a really big audience for your ads, if you can, as big as you can, because Facebook's going to solve the puzzle for you of who should see these. Let the algorithm make those choices. Okay. So if you start niching it down to empty nesters, newlyweds, families with kids, da, 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 you're going to make those audiences really, really, really small. So as a marketer, you know, we say the right message to the right person in the right way. That's marketing 101, right? But at the same time, you are making a choice for who the right person to see that ad, like who the right person for that house is. Now, if you're running four different versions of that ad to an empty nester, to a family, you know what I mean? But by being so laser focused, you actually may be excluding the right person that's going to end up buying that house. 
So that's so actually I where I wanted to go. I my ads to be way more effective when I'm more broad. That's kind of where I wanted to go, though. So if I have this property, and well, let's go back to the first one you mentioned. The, it's down the street from the Jewish Community Center. Uh, mm -hmm. I happen to want to, you know, go after people that hang out there, and they've indicated on Facebook that they hang out there. That seems like a logical, you know, uh, buyer pool. But if I also set one up for the, you know, the, the Baptist church down the street and the mosque down the road from that, and the, you know, I don't know, planetarium further down the road from that, whatever the case may be, if I have these four or five versions of every property ad specifically targeting a wide variety of groups, and I do that four or five every time, do I at least that way have some kind of deniability here and say, no, look, I'm, I'm deliberately repetitive and diverse every time. You know what I mean? Is that, that seems to me like it would be a safe move. If you're going to do that, that, why not just run a broader ad? I don't know. You tell me. I would just run a broader ad. Like okay. I, I find that's the safest. Okay. To, to me, to my interpretation of what we're, what we're governed by just now saying, you know, people that want to buy houses, that's not discriminatory, right? Like narrowing in that audience based on income level. It is a little bit, but that's also a qualification to be able to purchase the house. Mm -hmm. So it's not that you're zeroing them out because they don't make a lot of money. You're zeroing them out because they can't afford to buy the house or you're making an assumption. So really a lawyer might tell you that's still discriminatory. Sure. Now that was not prohibited in the list that you read. Were there any financial, you know, income level terms on there? And by the way, you told me earlier, that's a two page long list of words and phrases, right? Yep. Uh, family status, disability. No. No. Okay. So there you go. Any Target rich people. All your problems are solved. <laughs> yeah, because they, yeah. Anyway, we'll talk about that another day. That's why there's um, luxury real estate brands. So I want to throw one more out there, TJ. And I yeah. challenge you a little bit with this one because I know uh -oh. you and I are both guilty on it. So, you, and this is just, we're not governed by it because we're not governed by the fair housing laws, except where we're exercising on behalf of our clients, right? I was reading an interesting dialogue that was talking about the trend where we as lead generators or appointment setters, whatever you want to call it, are encouraged to, to cyber stalk our appointments or our leads prior to or in the midst of communication with these people. Okay. And the line of conversation basically went, what information are you gonna gain from cyber stalking that will not guide your conversation in a particular way? I'm not sure where you're at. So you're okay. saying- like, so if let's I, say yeah. I'm running a Facebook Messenger ad, which is allowing me to engage with people directly on Facebook. Part of the value of that is that I can immediately click on their profile and find out everything I want to know that's public, anything that's not privacy protected, right? I can see that their picture has kids. I can see that they're white. I can see that they play, that they're runners. I can see maybe they've got pictures of them at church. May, I can learn all of those things about that person. Okay. But if I do that before I talk to that person, is it humanly possible to not have that interaction guided by that information that I now have? As humans, is it possible for us to forget that we know that that person is a uh, 30 something, three kids under five runner who attends the Catholic church down the road? Got it. So, so you're saying I'm basically setting myself up for failure. I'm, I'm priming myself for, you know, wading into, you know, illegal territory or unethical territory or something just because I now know that if I say X, Y, and Z words, they're going to like it. But it's still illegal for me to do that because I'm treating them differently than I would treat the next person I see. I see. Yeah. So, all right. Because you're now, else you need that information. What, what other function does that have? Because if you are qualifying a buyer, you need to find out what they're looking for and can they afford the house they want and need. Can right. they, are they qualified? Those qualifying questions have absolutely nothing to do with who that person is. Right. So, but again, let's take it back to the, the actionable kind of tangible thing here. The problem is not knowing it. The problem is saying it. Right. Yeah, but as humans, can you, if you know they've got kids, is it possible for you to separate in your brain unintentionally steering them into a good school district? Well, uh, school district aside, I mean, I think you could at least steer, you know, it, it, I'll, I'll take it back to uh, like in, in law, right? I have, I've had legal clients in the past. Um, and one of the like phrases or whatever that, that the lawyers like to use is never ask a question you don't already know the answer to. Okay. So if I know what they're going to, how they're going to answer. I can, as you said, still be care, you know, be, be cautious about not priming them for it and not giving them the answer, but waiting for them to say it, right? 
Yes, but the last realtor board training that I was in on this subject said you shouldn't even be asking those questions because what the hell does it have to do with their qualification to buy a home? Well, what does it have to do with their qualification to buy a home? How many bedrooms do you need? What does it have to do with building a rapport with this client? Everything. But if I'm a person who's sensitive about the fact that I'm gay, you asking me, like the course of the conversation or maybe the fact that I don't have children is a really sensitive subject and you asking me, do you have children could feel descript- like that's what realtors get busted on Yeah, is people that they don't even intentionally, but asking, do you have children? Are you married? How do those kind of questions have nothing to do with your ability to buy a house. Mm-hmm. You could be harming someone and it could be appearance and effect mm-hmm. discriminatory to somebody. Yeah. Well, why does yeah. it matter if I have children? I said, I wanted three bedrooms. That's not your business. Why? Right. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it's it all, it's not gray area. And if it were an attorney doing this call, it would not be gray area. Right. I'm only presenting this as food for thought for people, both from an advertising, from a content, from a social media. Are you portraying yourself as an equal housing opportunity business? Right. Now, and if does you, that- every time you publish, click, make a phone call, are you being conscious of the laws that govern your industry? Does that cross over been- into, into just casual conversation? Yeah, it does. So you and I both have young kids, Courtney. If we, you know, got a lead on the phone or something, uh, you know, it, you, we had one of these. You and I had a joint phone call a week ago with a mutual client. And if we, you know, I happen to know that this particular client has two young children. I already know that about him. OK, so mm-hmm. if we just in a totally friendly, off topic sort of way, shared funny stories about the things our kids did and dressed up as for Halloween or something or what, what our plans are for Thanksgiving, we're just, you know, kind of shooting the shit about our kids. Mm-hmm. Is that problematic? I mean, if it's, and again, this is all based on my interpretation as not an attorney, but like, you know, in casual conversation, if it's if it's information they volunteer to you that you now know, that's different than asking, do you have children? Of course, of course, okay, okay. So I just, we're, we're like getting into sticky wickets here. Neither yeah. of us are attorneys or brokers, so we're, we should probably stop there. But the point <laughs> being, we need to be thoughtful about this stuff, you guys. You have got to be thoughtful about it. Your intent, you may be entirely pure because you sincerely believe this is a good school district and families would be thrilled to live here. You may be unintentionally discriminating in your actions because of that mindset. And by the letter of federal law, which we just discussed... <laughs> You're violating federal law. And by the letter of that law, you can there can be consequences to that. One of the most obvious of which is you lose your real estate license and your livelihood. Um, you can get cited on that. Yeah, there's a real good chance. If it's a real claim, you're losing your real estate license. So just be conscious of it. Don't be thoughtless in your clicks when you're being asked by Facebook to certify your compliance. Um, think about what you're doing and how you're doing it. Mm-hmm. And do your best to truly be an equal opportunity business. And if you do that and you do that in integrity, you know, your mindset will be in the right place when you're doing your activities in your business. And, you know, we can all do our best. Yeah. Right. Well, I'll tell you what, I got some reading to do. (laughs) I got your gears turning now. Don't I TJ? Big Big time. All right. We should probably wrap it up right there. Sounds good, man. So a good one today. Yeah. Yeah, let's let's have one about like cartoons or something next week. My my head's gonna explode. We'll we'll finish that conversation about Diet Coke next week. Yeah, we can talk about like emojis and gifts and stuff. Bitmoji. Yeah, let's do a fun one next week. A hard subject next week. All right, hey, listen, Courtney, have a happy Thanksgiving, my friend. All right, you too, man. If I had my little pilgrim hat, I'd put that on, but I don't have one, so I'm sure your kids have it. (laughs) Probably. All right. See ya. All right, bye, guys.